All right, bell ringers up. Listen up. Yes. They did two slides with yeah. Like the kids, that'll be like. Yeah, you can. Yeah, if we have five this week, then we'll have two from last week, right? South be seven. We don't have five. Oh, yeah. We're only here till Monday or Wednesday. We're only here Wednesday. So Austin and Jason, you have Wednesday. Oh, well, cut the door. Well, I'm not great. I'm not great. I'm not great. All right, I'll do it. Hold me. I did it. Yeah. I'm not great. I'm not great. We're in chapter three on Friday. Oh, so this is a new setting. Oh, wait, this is, we'll save the two from last week. But, uh, yeah. Sure. So we should, we should have three. It's good. Wednesday is your last day here. Technically, today's your Wednesday. Okay. Okay. No, they still are Monday. Yeah, yeah. Our goal yeah. Here on Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. You make those no skip Tuesday and you skip the Thursday. Because right. tomorrow, day Thursday. Right. It'll be Friday. Friday. No. So you short your five day be wrong. Three days. You're going to get wrong. Silence. No, I'm Yeah, I do need to review a little bit before we move on to the age of absolutism. It's going to be set in a stage. I know we talked a little bit about our candles already, uh, virtualism. And uh, I know we mentioned a little bit about the Columbian Exchange, but it should be quick. It should be somewhat just like I said, a review. And then uh, I have an assignment for you. We're going to break down a full of cartoon. One of the full of the cartoons. Anytime we have a chance to break that down, break any of them down, that's what we'll do. So that's what we'll have for today. So I should finish up within, I don't know, five, 10 minutes. Shouldn't take long for the notes today. And then I'll get you working on your son.
Thank you. All right, so mercantilism, mercantilism, what does it mean? What does it mean? Why go ahead since you wanted to stand up here and walk around? <laughs> no, go ahead. It, it's a policy that maximizes exports and minimizes exports. Okay, good, good, good. So we just talked about the age of exploration, three Gs, what were they again? Someone? Paul. Yeah, God, God, gold, and glory, right? So when it came to this age of exploration, there's many reasons why these European countries wanted to expand. And with that, with this colonization and this expansion into the new world, there came a lot when it came to extracting resources and materials. So yeah, gold and silver is one of the biggest things when it comes to uh, extracting these resources of wealth, but also other materials, other resources. We talked a little bit about that with the Columbian Exchange already. Okay, how we're gaining resources, eventually, like you know, the cash crop tobacco will be huge in the marketplace within Europe, especially with England. So with these resources, if these European countries can monopolize these resources, that just means a lot of wealth, right? And with wealth comes what, again? With wealth comes what, Paul? Power. Yep, good job, good job. So with this new chapter, okay, we need to know exactly how these monarchs, these kings, these queens become so powerful. And we already mentioned a little bit about a few monarchs within England, especially, that this age of absolutism starts to appear. And who do we talk about within England, where we see this first emergence of what we know as a modern day, well, I don't say modern day anymore, but more of a monarch. That we typically think of an absolute leader, an absolute monarch. Okay, we talked a little bit about Henry VIII first, right? Okay, and then, yeah, obviously came Elizabeth I. And we mentioned about how these were the golden years, the golden age of England. And a lot of it because their expansion. A lot of it because they defeated who in a war? Connor. Oh, here we talking. Spain. Spain. Yeah, good job. So with the dominance here of the seas, eventually we knew that conflict was going to come. So we talked a little bit about conflict already between Spain and England. And eventually there's going to be more warfare. Okay, so there's going to be a lot of a lot of war, a lot of conflict that we're going to be mentioning here with this age of absolutism, moving up into what we know of this imperialistic stage. So eventually, okay, like I mentioned, with the Columbia Exchange, with a lot of these resources coming from the New World to what we know of these European marketplaces, eventually this is going to cause conflict with these European powers, and with that brings this age of absolutism. Okay, you can say the technological advancements as well. Right? So we talked a little bit about the Renaissance and how these new innovations start to make things a little bit easier for people when it comes to the standard of living, but also when it comes to warfare, when it comes to weapons being introduced okay, during this time, this is going to give more power to the government, to the absolute monarchy. And within this chapter, we will talk about viewpoints, enlightenment views that start to appear, that start to challenge the structure, the political structure, really, of these European countries. So that is what this chapter is really going to be all about. Okay, it's going to first start off here with a review of the Columbian Exchange, how these European countries become so powerful through this trade, through this uh, mer mercantilism, this, ide this ideology of expanding wealth, okay, obviously through the resources and materials coming into the monarch. And then that's going to spur new ideas of structure of government. Okay, what government should look like, how it should act for the people. So we're going to talk a lot about enlightenment thinkers, okay, and their perspectives and how it could be applied to government, which is going to be a lot of influences to the United States government. And then we will mention more about the French Revolution within this chapter, and then we will talk about the Napoleonic Age. 
towards the end of this chapter. So that's where we're heading. Uh, that is really the scope and sequence of this chapter. And then uh, from here, we'll move right into the build up of World War One shortly after this uh, this chapter. Here. All right, we will talk about the scientific revolution as well during this chapter. We'll talk about it briefly. Okay, all right, any questions here? Again, I just want to give you a bell ringer. I know this is similar to what we just talked about on Friday, but uh, real quick, I just wanted to give you a review. So terms to start off with. So these are terms you had before as well. I understand that, but it just makes sense for the chapter and the transition from where we were with the Renaissance Reformation and the age of exploration to where we're going. All right, so there you go. So again, these terms should be somewhat reviewed to you. Parker, you finished? I'm good. You guys need more time here? You good? One more minute? Okay, one more minute here. So I'm just going to roll through these terms here since we already went over it quite a bit uh, last chapter. And uh, I'll get you working on your assignment then. Okay, I just want to review them with you so we know where we're at. Okay, and how this is going to move into the next chapter. And we'll move on. What's up? Did you know this day is Reformation Day? It is, yes. Yes, it is. The 95 Theses, right? Yeah, yeah. Good job, Chris. I usually get an email every morning of uh, what happened in history from Mr. Lightman. 
I wish we were at that right now. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. But hey, we just talked about it, right? We just went over it. The only thing, too, I mean, with November 11th coming up, Veterans Day, it would be nice to be finishing up World War One. But I'll off with you. All right, okay. Columbia Exchange. What do we have? What is it again? Named after who? Paul? Christopher Columbus. Good job. And what's this exchange out? So, so. Alana, what do you got? I thought that was your hand going up. Do you have his turn? Okay, what do you got? Okay, yeah, good job. So when it comes to the Columbia Exchange, we talked a little bit about this already, right? These European countries, as they're expanding their trade and their colonization even within the new world, the goal is to try to get a labor force, right? And with that, we all know African slaves with the transatlantic slave trade would be sent across the Atlantic from Africa to extract resources, okay, within Central, South America, and even parts of North America, right, eventually when we lead into the creation of the United States, right? So obviously the native populations within South America, Central America, and even North America would be forced to slaves, denture servitude, uh, to extract resources for the wealth of the European countries. But this, is, again, is just another, I think a little bit more detailed uh, when it comes to what was being exchanged between all three, uh, really continents at this point, right? So European countries, they're sending down trinkets, okay, guns, uh, different types of armor, weaponry, you name it, to Africa. And the African kingdoms, okay, they would actually try to take members of rival native populations to sell within this slave trade. And we all know African slaves would be transported across to uh, South America, Central America, and even North America in order to work, okay, for slavery. Uh, and like you see here, there's many other resources being uh, really, uh, really traded back and forth from Europe to what we know as the Americas to Africa, right? But the main thing to note is that these European countries were trading armor, new weaponry, okay, a lot of times when it comes to gold and silver jewels to the African kings, and there would be a lot of conflict, a lot of war between these African kingdoms in order to receive these new benefits, these new finalized goods from these European countries. And they would exchange other rival, uh, uh, well, rival members of other tribes to be sold within the slave trade. Okay. And then we talked a little bit about, obviously, the transportation of slaves across the Atlantic. Okay, We mentioned that already, right, and what these slave ships look like. Okay, here's just a triangular trade we just already talked about. Okay, we already talked about the Columbian Exchange, so we should be good with that. I'm just going to keep moving so I can get you working on your assignment. Again, this is something we reviewed already. We already talked about. Main thing to note, too, is that there is disease, sickness being spread from Europe to the New World. Mm -hmm. the immune systems of these indigenous populations within the New World, they weren't ready for this type of encounter yet, this type of interaction. So with that, that led to a lot of deaths. All right, so again, with the transatlantic slave trade, we already mentioned about that and how the European countries are trading new forms of weaponry, armor, gold, silver with these African kings in order, in return, to steal other uh, members of rival tribes of these African kingdoms uh, for forced labor. So again, sad stuff to hear about, but uh, that was really what was going on during this time. All right, again, we talked about the slave ship already. Okay, how packed it was with these, a lot of the African slaves going across the Atlantic Ocean. All right, again, they would try to tucker them out by having them wrestle literally on the top of the deck or even dance in some cases to try to make sure that there would be no rebellions or any type of action against the slave driver, really. And uh, as you can see here, this is just showing even more detail about how these African slaves would be piled onto these ships. Okay, another look of it. So the coffin position, I didn't get to mention this last chapter. But this is literally how these African slaves would sleep and lay on these ships. So claustrophobia to its finest, literally, as they're packed on these ships. Okay, so pretty sad things to see about here. Obviously, when they're going to the bathroom, they have to go right there. It's not like they have a design toilet or bathroom for these members. And if they would die, they would just throw them overboard, right? So like I mentioned, when it came to the transportation of these slaves, only about 20% would actually make it from Africa to the New World, to Central America, North America, and South America. So again, sad, sad things. 
All right, so again, we talk about uh, mercantilism, we talk about capitalism and how this Colombian exchange, this triangular trade, reached levels of wealth for these European countries. They're accessing resources and materials that you couldn't find anywhere else in the world. And again, if these European countries can monopolize, meaning they are the sole provider of these goods, then that will bring enormous amounts of wealth. They can jack the prices to whatever they want within the marketplace. Okay, and that's going to bring an extraordinary amount of power. So again, with capitalism, this is the first emergence really of it. I know I talked a little bit about it, a, a little bit with the medieval guilds. Okay, that was somewhat of a sign of it. Okay, at this time during this Colombian exchange, we see it enhanced even more. And it's really coined by Adam Smith, who we'll talk about with the Enlightenment thinkers here shortly towards the middle of this chapter. Okay, so with that, these economies are growing. And the private sector is becoming a little bit larger. And we already talked about these charter companies, these joint stock companies that are going to actually provide for the exploration, for the colonization within the new world, especially for England. And that's going to allow them to become a dominant, dominant world power. One that wouldn't really see second place until World War I, World War II. Okay. And we all know the United States kind of takes over after that. All right. So here is your assignment. So I'm going to have this up for you guys. I'll come back to it, but I'll leave it up. This is the political cartoon of mercantilism that I think is important for you guys to know. It's a common one. I'm sure maybe you've seen it before already, but uh, I'll put the assignment up here shortly. And I'll just leave this political cartoon up and you should have enough time to complete it within class. So you shouldn't have any homework. But real quick, let me get to the assignment. I'll bring this back up for you guys so you can see it. <clears throat> Again, this is just a quick review of what we talked about last chapter, and then we'll jump right into the age of absolutism tomorrow. So as you can see here, chapter three, again, if you want to find the textbook chapter, if you want to see the purpose, the objectives, you just click on that page right below the module, you'll see the textbook chapters. I even have the presentation here in case you want to follow along. That's fine. I know I might move fast sometimes, but there you go. There you go. And then here's some nice pictures. Yeah, look at that. So we'll talk about the French Revolution in this chapter, and towards the end, we'll mention about the Napoleonic Age. All right, so we'll go back to modules. Here's your assignment. Mercantilism, political cartoon. All you gotta do is fill out the sheet. I think there's, I think eight questions. I could be wrong, let me check. So you're just analyzing the political cartoon and completing it as I'll put the picture back up here shortly. There it is. All right, so there's a few questions here. Eight, yep, eight. So answer in detail, guys. Okay, I just want to see a couple words here, but answer in detail. Again, you should be able to finish this pretty quick. I'll just keep this up for you guys. And then you can reference it off the board. All right. Sound good? You guys know what you're doing? Paul? All right. Here you go. Here you go.